Hello everyone and welcome to our new review on the channel. Today we're going to be looking at another one of the Penguin new releases and that is Diabolical Bet by Nicholas Lawrence. This is a really fun trick and one that I think that some people can, are going to want to learn more about before making their purchase. So let's roll the intro and get straight into the review. Now that you've stuck around and you want to learn more about Diabolical Bet, what is the effect? In its simplest form, it's a die through card effect. That's, that's what the effect is in its simplest form. So let me give you a small performance of the effect. So you start out by showing a few cards to your spectators. You show them the cards, just like so. You present them the die and the glass, and you tell them that you want to make a bet of how you can place this die inside of the glass without touching the cards and then they're going to tell you different uh, ways to do it but you tell them the easiest way is just by slapping the cards and the die straight through the actual cards and you can show that there's nothing on the cards nothing in the front nothing on the back but then you tell the specter that they're going to do this so you take it again and you tell them that they're going to be the ones to push the die through the card. So you place it just like this, and you tell them to place their hand flat over the cards, and on three, to just slap the cards and the die. So then the specter proceeds to do that. It goes through, you come over, you take the cards, you show them the die, and then you can also proceed to give them the cards to inspect, and there's no holes, nothing to be seen. And that's essentially how the effect would look. Now, maybe because I'm sitting, some angle issues have happened. If there's any flash, I'll cover it in the video. Maybe there isn't, but yeah, that's essentially how the effect would look. So, what do you get when you purchase Diabolical Bet? How much does it cost and where do you buy it? So, you buy this at Penguin Magic. It comes in this really big box, this tough, tough box. And what you get is you get your die you get your shot glass, you get some cards, you get some gimmicks, and you also get an extra ending where you place the cards on the table and when the specter is going to kind of look at them, they're going to see that there's like a black hole in them and that there's an actual hole, but then you tell them, no, no, no. And then you can peel off the hole from the card. So it's like if you place the cards on the table and they're going to look at them, they're going to be like, oh, I knew there was a hole in the cards. Then you can actually just peel off the hole and you can show that it's two normal cards. So there's additional material provided for you if you want to do that. And on top of all this, you then also have your instructional video, which is around 30-ish minutes long, that goes over what you get, some performances, some ideas, the ways that you can handle the cleanup, the ways that you can handle the bet, etc. It goes over everything you need and it's well shot and it's with Nicholas Lawrence himself. So that's essentially what do you get. So, before we actually get into the review, I do want to talk about the gimmick. Because when I bought this, I was expecting, like, similar to what Nicholas Lawrence has put out in his last few releases, like, something that has flaps, threads, strings, magnets, moving parts, sliding parts, open trap doors, etc. So, I'm expecting some, like, really big gimmick. And it's not. It's something that you're, like no way I just spent 40 bucks on this for this. That's the reaction that you're going to get when you get this for the first time. But sometimes simplicity is best because now you don't have to worry about having to repurchase this uh, effect again. You won't have to worry about the gimmick breaking. You won't have to worry about the gimmick not operating well. You won't have to worry about anything because this is such a simple gimmick that you're going to be, you're going to have it for the rest of your life and you're going to be able to build them on any back so you don't have to even use the cards that are provided to you you can make your own from your favorite deck your own gimmick which is great and i find that yes i was in the camp of a bit upset when i got this and i saw what you're getting and i was like there's no way that i paid 40 dollars for something this easy why didn't i think of that but a lot of times when you say to yourself why didn't i think of that it means that someone just you know thought of something super smart that just works and in in one way, I'm a bit happy that the gimmick is so easy because it's something that I'm never going to have to repair or buy again and I'm going to have for the rest of my life, 
which is kind of great. So that, that's out of the way. Let's get into difficulty. Is this difficult to perform? I wouldn't say this is easy nor hard. I would put this in the intermediate category because as you saw from the performance, there is some, uh, some palming involved. There is some things involved here. It's not just push the card through, push the dice through the card. So there is a bit of things here that you have to work with and some audience management as well, because when I performed this once to, uh, to someone and they pushed the dice through the cards, the first thing they did was grab the cards. I wasn't even able to do patter or anything. They literally just slapped the die through the cards. And the first thing they did is immediately just take the cards like this and look at them. So, of course, that was not ideal in that situation. Friends, so it doesn't really matter. But you do have to work a bit on your audience management in that part. And yeah, it's not easy, it's not hard, but you'll have to work a bit audience management wise and the moves, etc., to make it as clean as possible. About practicality, is this practical to perform? Um, yes, because if you do perform this, you won't have to carry around the shot glass because if you go somewhere where you know there's going to be a glass or shot glasses, you won't have to carry around this with you. Even though they give this to you, this is good to practice at home, etc. And you can even carry the shot glass with you if you have your own case. But if you're just out and about, you can literally just carry around a few cards and your gimmick and the die. And that is literally basically no pocket space. So you would have to carry around this. So you carry around this in your pocket. You can even put these the cards in your wallet and the die in your pocket and you're good to go. So practicality wise, it's not much. And what's also cool is that it kind of feels maybe a bit impromptu. If you're at a, if you're at a bar with friends and you're having a shot or something and you have a shot glass, you can like tell them, guys, let's make a bet. How would you do this? And you take out your things and you do the effect. So it feels a bit impromptu too, which is really nice regarding practicality because you're just removing a few cards from your wallet and then a die and you're just doing the effect, right? So it, it's kind of a bit nice in that regard. And also the fact that, you know, you don't really have to be scared of the cards breaking or whatever. You can literally just place it in your pocket because even if by the end of the night, the gimmick bends in your pocket, you're just gonna go back home and make one in like 30 seconds, right? So that's a, that's a major positive that you have to consider here. So that's it about practicality. Now let's talk about where do you perform this? So I think this is performable I think this would work in parlor settings, and I think this really works in casual settings. I don't really think this is something that's amazing for table hopping, except if you carry around your own shot glass with you. But, and you could do it, but you do need a table. So that's one, you do need a table for it. So if you don't perform with a table, you can't really do this. But performance wise, I do think in my opinion, this works really well at restaurant, bars, and casual performances at a, at a friend's house or at your own house or in certain parlor settings. I think this is gonna work great because that's where Eric Cake performs it in the actual tutorial and I think it works well in a parlor setting. But even then, it's more of a casual parlor setting because people are like standing around him like if he was at a bar. Now this is great if you're a bartender. So if you're a bartender and you do magic, this is great because you can literally just, while you're making someone's drink, you take another shot glass and you just tell him, how would this work? Boom, you do it, you leave the cards, you give them their drink. This would work well if you're a bartender. But apart from that, I honestly think in my opinion, as any effect, you can work any effect anywhere you want, right? You can find solutions. But to me, I think this is really good for bars, restaurants, and casual performances at home or parlor settings where people can like walk around and just come to see you, etc. Because I think table hopping, I don't know. I. For this effect, I don't think that's the best way to perform it. So now that we've got all of that out of the way, let's get into the positives and negatives. So what are the positives and what are the negatives of this effect? Let's start with the negatives. What are the negatives? The first thing is, I feel that this could have been a download because I don't need the shot glass. I literally have like 10 of these already at home and I have playing cards at home. So you're essentially paying 40 bucks for the buck for the box and these gimmicks that you probably do not need. 
So I honestly feel this could have been marketed as a download. Now, again, I know I don't want to talk too much about this because I know there's hard work put into this. The idea has value, etc. But I do think that it would have been nice to have the option to buy it as a set. So get all of it as a set or just be able to purchase it as a download. I think that would have been a nice idea to have it like a $20 download. And if you want the whole kit to have it for 40 bucks, so have everything that you need for 40. I think that could have been an idea or something a bit beneficial because for a lot of people, I think this is expensive due to the fact that everything is things that you already have at home and that you could do literally in three minutes without any DIY with objects that you already have at home. So I do feel that the price is a bit hefty. I don't usually complain about that, but I do feel in this case, it's a bit hefty. Apart from that, negatives, uh, some audience management is required here. I've heard some people say that the gimmick is a bit too simple, some positive, some negatives to that. I feel that the fact it's so simple is great, but other people feel it's a negative because what the specter is probably thinking is going on is literally what is going on. So, you know, you can, you can choose sides in that regard. Also, um, you know, I think that as a negative, maybe there's, you know, the, the move that you do to make the cards examinable isn't really well placed because if you make the die go through the cards, no one is going to suspect is going to suspect the die. No one is going to su suspect the glass. Everyone is going to think it's the cards. So the fact you have to come over, take the cards, show this, put it down and then give them the cards. I think maybe for some speculators, they're going to find that a bit fishy. So, you know, regarding that cleanup, there is a bit there that, you know, I don't know how to, I, I, you get what I mean. It's, it's hard not to say to say less, but also not say more in order to not tip over the method completely, but you get what I mean. And then regarding the positives, positives is super visual. It's relatively easy to do. The gimmick is super simple. You can build the gimmick for the rest of your life with any deck that you want. Um, the shot glass that you get and everything that you glass is and everything that you get is ready to go out of the box. It's rel it's pretty much inspectable. It's relatively clean in the way that you perform it, except maybe, as I mentioned, the cleanup is a bit iffy. But apart from that, it's, it's a relatively good trick. And in my opinion, if you liked what you see, I think that even though it's 40 bucks, I think if you like what you see, you'll be pleased to know that if you buy this, you're getting good quality props and you're getting something that you're gonna be able to perform for the rest of your life and never have to buy anything ever again in order to do this, which is a positive in my opinion. So would I recommend this? I think if you really loved what you saw, I would recommend this. If you were just like, okay, that's a cool trick or you were indifferent or on the fence, I wouldn't rush to go out to buy this. But I do think it's a good effect and I, I really wanted something like this because I bought Lava by Illusionist and I was really upset with it. I'll maybe make a review of it, but but yeah, I kind of wanted to have something where you have an object on a card, on a glass, and then you can just penetrate that object through the glass, through the card and in the glass. And I feel that this is a brilliant way to do it and it achieves it perfectly. So for me, it's definitely worth it for what I got. But I do understand it's not for everyone, but I would still recommend it if you were, if you really liked what you saw. So what would I give it on 10? I would give it a 7.5 on 10. I think it's a good effect. It's a quirky little effect. It's quick. It's fun. It's a small little bar bet, but it's nothing that is going to make people lose their mind or something that people are going to remember you for the rest of your life if you perform this. So yeah, I think a 7.5 is a fair review of this because it does what it's supposed to do and it does it well, but it does have some caveats that you have to keep in mind. So that's all I have to say about Diabolical Bet by Nicholas Lawrence. I hope that you enjoyed the review. Feel free to comment, subscribe, and all of the good stuff. And I'll see everyone in the next one. Bye-bye.